Are you one of our speakers? I'm just Joe Q. Public. <laughs> one of the few ones here. Just, um, yeah, I have been. <laughs> so we're Occupy. Yes. Protesting austerity. Yes. Uh, coordinating with the Danville, Kentucky uh, debates. So jobs equals prosperity. Austerity equals poverty. So don't cut social spending. Yes. And jobs mean cutting the deficit. So we need more jobs. Yes. Yeah. And then Tom's down there. Tom, hold your phone up. 1.8 trillion needlessly idle with 23 million workers idle equals austerity. What's the trillion dollars? What are we spending the trillion dollars on? Can't hear me? That's all right. Occupy. <laughs>
parents and children who receive cash welfare in this country. That means that four out of five do not receive any cash welfare whatsoever. The second number related to that is that only 4.5 million people received welfare in 2008 uh, as compared to 14 million in 1996. Now that was a boom time and we had 14 million people on welfare. Now, in a terrible economy, we have less than a third as many. And the sixth number, there are about 10,000 homeless children in Jefferson County Public Schools out of, in round figures, 100,000 students. That's 10%. Think about that. Three kids in an average 30 children uh, classroom does not even have a home to go home to. Now, I could go on about many, many things. But the one thing I want to emphasize before I have to sit down is, is something that's really at the core of all this. $1.8 trillion is being sat on by non-financial corporations, not even counting banks and the like, which, and they're not investing it because they say there's not enough demand and they say there's too much uncertainty. Well, they're doing that while at least 23 million people are hunkered down largely hidden humans, can't even find a job. So as you can see, Mr. Ryan, Mr. McConnell, and others, we USers, the 99% of us, know a thing or two about austerity. Viva the 99%. Woo! <laughs> a good speech. Thank you for allowing me to come. Uh, I am the Jefferson County Coroner, in case you didn't know. And I am here to request an ordinance that would permit the coroners and deputy coroners to have their vehicles equipped with lights and sound. Under the Kentucky State Statute that was passed last year, this was uh, passed in the legislation. By law, I, the coroner, must make a written request for the legislative body of this county. That request must be approved by this body uh, by an ordinance or court order for the coroner or the deputies in this county to have flashing lights. So I am here to request that. The reason for it is not to get to a scene any faster because obviously it's not, speed is not an issue when it comes to a uh, deceased. However, when there is a traffic accident on the interstate or in other areas, it's very difficult for an unmarked, non-light car to get through traffic in order to get to that scene. The same is true for uh, fire deaths when they've walked off roads, and I have not done it yet, but would like to if need be. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Lisa Wilson. My name is Lisa Wilson, and I want to tell you about the community effort to bring a children's museum to Louisville. Along with the board of directors, I'm working with 80 plus volunteers on this grassroots project. We've been working for about a year, have secured nonprofit status, and have been attending events and festivals in order to garner support from Louisville families. The new museum will be entirely hands on and interactive, and will feature <coughs> cultural, theatrical, musical, fitness, gardening, and several other types of exhibits. At the onset of this project, we sent out a survey to determine the interest level in having a new children's museum. We received extremely positive feedback with 98.4% of over 1,000 respondents saying that this is something that is needed in Louisville. Hundreds of comments flooded in from excited parents, grandparents, and teachers encouraging us to move forward, and many wanted to get involved. Many community members have stepped forward and have provided pro bono services. A photographer, general counsel, tax attorney, several graphic graphic designers, a website designer, architect, and the list goes on and on. The people of Louisville want this museum and are willing to do whatever it takes to see it happen. According to the National Association of Children's Museums, or ACM, children's museums provide the following to individuals and families in towns and cities of all sizes. Helping children develop essential foundational skills, lighting a creative spark for discovery and lifelong learning, providing environments where families connect in meaningful ways, helping to reverse stigma and discrimination, strengthening community resources that educate and care for children, contributing to local economies, and reducing economic barriers. Of the 30 largest cities in America, Louisville is now the only city that does not provide its children with a children's museum featuring a wide array of subject areas. Though we are blessed to have a great science center and a children's art museum, 
There are definite gaps in the experiences that are provided for the children in Europe. I have provided a handout to you detailing what other cities are offering. As you can see, Louisville falls short of what is being provided in, in all of these other cities. Most of the cities on this list are our peer cities, which we as a city have identified as those we want to be in line with. The Greater Louisville Project states that we want to be an advancing and competitive city. To do this, we must grow on our offerings. This project is a great opportunity to help Louisville advance and to be more competitive in what it offers to both its tourists and its residents. A recent Facebook survey indicated that in the last year, 78% of those polled visited at least one children's museum in another city. It would be wonderful if these families could utilize a local children's museum and put their money back into Louisville. I'm asking today for your support and assistance in undertaking this important project. This is something that is needed and is wanted by constituents in each and every district. Each of you has the influence and ability to help make this happen. It is our hope that we can work together with Metro government to help strengthen our community through the development of the Global Children's Museum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. You have with us today, David Hunt. Um, David just received principal of the year uh, from Jefferson County Public Schools. He's the principal at Western, which resides in Councilman Moore's district. He resides in Councilman Atkinson's district, but he has the best relationship with me. Yeah, so that's why I'm <laughs> um, but David began his administrative career with JCPS as an uh, athletic director and then assistant principal at Seneca. Then he moved on to middle school principal and the past five years he's been at Western High School. And when he went to Western, the uh, mass efficiency was at 5%. Today it's at 45. Uh, reading was in the teens and today it's at 75 percent. The, uh, David also brought the early college program to Western. Today, 250 students at Western participate in this. And this year alone can earn 500 credit hours towards a college diploma uh, at all two of them. And the good that he's done out there in the five short years he's been there.